Hi, good afternoon, home language. It's SPs and FETs. Um, it's week five. It's post Easter week in time. So I'm hoping you all had a blessed and wonderful Easter and that you're on to the swing of things again and really getting into SS2, hopefully. This is going to help you because we can look at lesson plan design as well as rubric design, which is both, they're both important for SS2. But it's also going to give me a chance to just highlight a few things that I found problematic with SS1. So this is my voice. It's my time to actually say things. And for those of you that do access um, recordings and um, the PowerPoints, maybe this is a bit of old hat, but I think there are many, many students who just have just not ever bothered to look at the recordings or check out Canvas pages to see what's going on. And it's been quite disturbing. So um, it's half past 12. Um, let me get on with this because I've got another meeting coming up now. So I'm going to just share my screen with you. Um, let's get to that. Slide share. As you can see, yeah, we're on to lesson plan and rubric design, week five. This is quite important for SS2, but it's all about lesson plan design. Um, FETs, you're going to be looking at formal speaking, whereas SPs are going to look at active listening, and as well as the rubric design for your your listening or your speaking that you are going to design as part of your lesson, because those rubrics are so important for your grades, your grade reports that you're also always looking out for. I will be releasing um, the grades too for the, I think it's for the home language, not the SPS for um, week one, um, but I've got the rest. I will release those to you so they shouldn't be hidden anymore. So you'll be seeing some of your grades as well. So um, still again, we're on the email story. I thought we'd made headway here, but um, this weekend is a bit frantic with people just submitting wrong things or not submitting at all. Um, please always remember to put your course code on your email subject line for those of you that haven't done this yet. It just makes things so much easier and helps me to understand which of my three courses you belong to and helps me to identify where I can go and check out where your problem is. Um, Yes, so if you're THF, if you're not sure that you are, please get back to me if you're not sure of your course code. you This is the TEHF, it means Home Language FET, um, and the other course I teach for Home Language is um, TEHS, that means Home Language SP. Um, please, if you're not sure what your course code is, please get back to me. It becomes quite frustrating when you email me and I just don't know who you are. I've got to go then check on Gradebook, and this just takes up so much time. Whereas if you just upfront said I'm home language, T E H F, I know straight straight away we're going to go for you on Canvas. Um, also, please note that um, <laughs> SS1 and SS2 and SS3 are different course, um, different assignments for your different courses. So if you're home language FET, it's a different case study or lesson plan. To what it would be for HS. We don't, they're not the same, they are different. So if you go and submit a THF for THHS, you're going to get very poor marks because they are different. And um, please just don't become confused. If you are confused, get back to me because I've had many people thinking they are THF, but they're actually THS. And please also note that there are different submission dates. Um, the TEHF was supposed to submit on the 6th of April, whereas the TEHS was supposed to submit on the 4th of April. These are not negotiable. Those are your dates. Um, if THF wants to submit on the 4th of April, that's fine, but it becomes problematic when the SPs want to submit on the later date. Please go and check your homepage. Please go and check the announcement I sent today to try and highlight this. If you are still confused, please email me and say, I don't know who I am or what I am or where to see the submission dates. I'll also put that in the announcement. Okay. Okay, let's quickly look at the spreadsheet. Um, it seems like there are 98 FETs at the moment and 110 that have registered, but I've seen when I sent the non, not submitted emails to you all, it seems like some of you are wrongly submitted or, or not correctly submitted, but it showed up that you hadn't submitted for me. So we're trying to iron this all out. If you look at numbers, it seems like there's about 60 odd of you for FET that are active. If you look at the SS1, there were 65 of you that submitted. So maybe there are about 65 that are active for FET home language. For SP, there should be 110 according to Canvas, but 84 submitted. 
Um, so that's quite a problem for me because there's also about 16 or 17 of you that are not submitting. I'm not too sure what's happening. Maybe once the numbers, registration numbers are sorted out, this won't be a problem anymore. Um, so if you are 65 of you instead of 98, that's great. <laughs> um, then most people are submitting. If there are 84 SPs and you all submitted, that's great. It seems like there's vacillating numbers in terms of submissions. That says, good, I'm not quite sure I'm there yet. Um, if you look at the 51 for SPs that submitted quiz three, um, that did close at on the 9th, which was Sunday night. Just to reiterate, I will be re uploading weeks one to four at the in the last semester week of the semester, which is about week 12. So if you haven't submitted week one, two, three, or four, you will be able to have a chance to submit them. Not from week five, everything will then close when they should. Okay, so I'm a bit concerned at this point. I've spoken to my discipline leader about all the issues that actually emerged with the, the submission of um, the first um, assignment. I'm just hoping it's going to be plain sailing for SS2. Let's hope. So, mentee, um, thank you for those who have actually given me two reasons why you should, how you show good listening skills on mentee. Um, there were 18 of you that did that. Thank you for your two comments. And if I look at that, I can see that most of you said making eye contact and is important to show that you are listening. So please make a note of that. I can see there's also maintaining eye contact. So it's actually, it should even be bigger than this because there's making eye contact was not combined with maintaining. So a lot of you said eye contact. Yes, that's very good. Just please note that paying attention doesn't show me that you're listening. I, I don't can't read in your head paying attention, but I can read eye contact. I can read nodding. I can read maybe a gesture. I can see that you're not fidgeting, right? Um, facing the person. So those are, I can see a lot of you said focus, being silent. Yeah, I can see being silent. So just make sure that these are active things that I can see that you are listening and eye contact is one of the things you've identified as very important to show good listening skills. So those for you are designing a lesson plan for SP, please remember these and what you're going to show eye contact, okay, for the person who's actually speaking, okay, or you've got to listen to. Okay, lesson plan design. I'm just quickly going to go, this is your SS2. Um, please note there are two submission dates, um, the 9th and the 11th of May. Um, SPs, you will here's your date it's also on canvas quick links go and check your the table 9th of may yes there it is on the calendar sps you are 9th of may for your submission if you're not sure if you sp that means home language senior phase your submission dates are 9th for FETs, they're different colors not the same it's on the 11th okay not the same date so you can submit on the 9th but sps you cannot submit on the 11th all right please just Get this into your brains that then one's not ne negotiable. You can put it on before the ninth, but you can't submit after the ninth. Please take note of the submission dates. Don't assume they are the same. They are different. Please take note. Listen to the recordings. I'll be reiterating this in my SS2 lesson plan design overview where I'll go through the assignment again. Okay. Also, again, turn it in enable. I'm sure all of you know how to submit on turn it in now, hopefully. Um, I've said I want you to keep it to 20% and less. This is all different TED Talks you're going to be using as your content material. Um, there's no reason why you should be more than 20% because it's a uniquely created lesson plan that you yourself are creating. The only parts that should be the same would be the headings, okay, or um, the way you... I'm not even, I don't even think the um, in-text referencing will be the same. Um, it'll only be the headings. And if it's only the headings pinked in, that's not a problem, okay? It's when the text is, when your content is now going to reflect that you have copied it from somewhere. Okay, that becomes problematic. Okay, so remember different assignments for different specializations. FET, you're going to do speaking based on your um TED Talk on public speaking, SPs, you're going to do listening based on your TED Talk on multilingualism. They're different. You can't, one can't replace the other. 
And then at the end, you're going to do a six minute conclusion, which you're going to you're going to upload the clip. I will go through the recording section when I do the SS2 overview. I will speak about how you can record and so on. It's a six minute conclusion on how you will present the consolidation of your lesson to me. It's not going to be telling me about it. It's going to be actually teaching it to me. And remember, the consolidation shows that you've achieved all your lesson objectives as well. So um, today we look at the NCS lesson plan, where you can find it from the National Curriculum Statement, the TP lesson plan, which I think you all have received already, Colleen's lesson plan, and then a generic lesson plan. Um, all three have been uploaded in week five, and you can access those templates. Or you can use your own template as long as you've got the headings that are required in the assessment. And then I'm also going to give you a few less useful websites to look at. So your lesson planning documents are the CAPS document. If you also can go and look at www.education.gov.za to find some information. And I'll show you a bit about that now. Ferreira, there you are. There's your pages, 54 to 55. And Colleen, 109 to 110, which is quite good. We can look at the Colleen um, template in detail as well. Yes, if you want to go and check what the um, basic education has to say about lesson plans, Please go to the site, www.education.gov.za, um, go and search, write in lesson plans, and then this will come up like that, lesson plans, and then you can see there's a lot there that you can go and just click on about lesson plans, um, education.com lessons, printable, digital resources, lesson plans, guided lessons, everything there. So if you want more, go and have a look at this site as well. This is the TP lesson plan, which I think you've all received. Um, there's different sections here, which we're going to go over. Now I'm going to go through them. I will highlight some of these in my SS2 overview as well. So the first thing is prior learning, the importance that you do tap into prior learning because this creates a connection between what you're going to be presenting and what the knowledge is the students already have. So if you look at this, um, if they've got prior knowledge, it helps learning. And you have to activate it normally at the start of your lesson. Um, if you don't have it and it's not active at the start of your lesson, it hinders learning. So if you think about um, public speaking, which is the um, TED talk for um, FETs, if they've got no idea what public speaking is and you haven't activated that, those FETs will battle with the actual um, topic that they are working with. For the um, SPs, it's about multilingualism. If you haven't activated that actual knowledge what about what multilingualism is, your lesson's not going to get on to a good start because you haven't activated that, that knowledge. Also, if you're using the TP lesson plan, there's the section with lesson objectives or outcomes, and they've divided this into knowledge, skills, and values. And this is all to do what will this learners be expected to know, do, and value by the end of the lesson. So remember, it's only one lesson. It's not a whole semester that you're looking at. So don't have 10 million objectives. Just have two or three that you know that they're going to know by the end of the lesson. Okay, so if you look at the, the first one, knowledge, what knowledge will they need to know about um, speaking? What knowledge will they be expected to know about speaking? With, with um, listening, it might be being an active listener. They, they've got knowledge of that. You've activated that. And by the end of the lesson, they'll know exactly what an active listener is. If it's for speaking, it might be hard to deliver an audible speech or how to design a PowerPoint page. That might be the knowledge that you want them to have by the end of the lesson. Then we have the skills. What will they be able to do? These are things that are demonstrable that you can see that they are doing. They, they take, they've got to take notes. They've got to research um, the internet. They've got to um, summarize a paragraph. You can see them doing it. So it is demonstrable. So I have about three or four skills for uh, um, obviously for listening. It must be note taking, questioning, um, paraphrasing. Uh, all those things are very important. For, um, for speech making, it'll be using notes, mind maps, slides, visuals, all those things are important. What about values? Okay. Um, if you're listening to somebody and you're trying to show attentiveness and courtesy, those are values you need to have. Um, if it's for speaking, it might be participation, it might be questioning, it might be um, ethical, um, resource getting, 
all those things are important. Um, also respect for others in turn taking or not speaking when others are speaking as well. So those are all respect things you're going to have. I'm going to give you a whole list of values in the next few slides. Um, you also have to have resources. Um, please just don't say PowerPoint. Um, please just give me examples of what you're going to have on your PowerPoints. Or don't just say worksheet, tell me what the worksheet is. Don't just say textbook, tell me what the textbook is and the chapter and so on. So it must be detailed resources. So if I were going to go and teach your lesson, I would see what those resources were. And I, and I could access them as well. So this is on your TP um, plan, some examples of what knowledge is. If it's for active listening, and the knowledge they might need to have is how, what's the difference between hearing and listening? What is the difference between speaking speeds and listening speeds? How do you take notes? What about questioning? If it's to do with speaking, it might be the whole thing about nonverbal presenting skills that are so important. And the need for eye contact, posture, gestures, facial expression, smiley, nice faces, and so on. So just maybe two or three, not, not, not reams, please. The skills that they must be able to demonstrate in the lesson, remember, not more than three is fine. You must be able to ask questions. If it's for, for, for listening, brainstorm ideas, design mind maps, you might use it with your um, listening skills. Um, for your speaking, it might be designing that PowerPoint slide or the introduction slide, using visuals on your PowerPoint slide, um, using bullet formations. Those are things that are important, as well as projecting your voice and using those. Those are all important too. Please do not use, let me say this again, please do not use understand because you can't demonstrate understanding. You can demonstrate understanding by taking notes, but don't use the word understand because you can't see what's going on in my head. I can't see what you're understanding as I'm speaking here. Maybe you're understanding nothing. Don't use the word no, they must know. How, how do you assess no? All right. Can you see no? You can't. What about aware? There must be aware. How can you show awareness? You can say just um, showing um, respect for the environment by picking up rubbish. Picking up rubbish is the demonstrable skill, but you can't see the awareness. Okay, so don't use those words. I don't want to see them in any of your um, learning outcomes. Please don't use them. Okay, must I say that again? Please don't use them. Um, that is an attitude. There's a whole list that you can think about for your lesson like respect and politeness. This goes with speaking and with listening, attentiveness, diligence, doing your work, helpfulness, sharing, honesty, empath empathy, consistency. Those are things you can demonstrate within a lesson. So with Colleen, um, he speaks, this is what I got from Ferreira and figure 4.2. This template is in fact in your um, can on your Canvas page, you'll see it's the Colleen template. You can upload it. I have retyped it so you'll see it with this, but this is the actual document from, which I took a photo of from Colleen. So um, he's got title at the top and the date. Um, the topic and the title are things that I think you've got in the TP. The topic is straight from CAPS. What is CAPS to topic in the actual CAPS document? And the title relates to the actual, the speaking or the listening activity that you're designing. It's more particular relating to a multilingualism, a listening to a multilingualism paragraph or recording, something that's exactly from the actual the task as well. Um, over here, you've got the lesson content. What are the key facts or concepts that, they, that you need them to understand as a result of this lesson? I need them to be active listeners and being able to complete a point form summary. Um, or speaking, they need to design a PowerPoint slide introduction um, to as part of their formal speech making. So just an overview of the content they're going to have. And then Colleen divides the pre, during and post lesson sections into introduction. How are you going to activate their prior learning in that and how are you going to motivate them for the lesson? It's about five minutes. The teacher activities and the learning activities are the during activities. What's going to happen in during the lesson? What, are the, what is the teacher going to do? What is the learners going to do? Their steps can I follow this? This is not a 10 page document, it's clear steps of your lesson and the closure. How am I going to assess that my learning objectives have been met? Okay, that's been logical and they have met them. Um, there is going to be a place for assessment. Um, you've got to do a point form summary for the SPs and you've got to do a formal presentation speech 
with with a set, with rubrics and or marking guides for your FETs. You don't have to do the lesson evaluation. You can, but I'm not going to mark it. All right. I'm still on clean. Um, lesson outcomes must be clear statements of what they should be able to do by the end of the lesson. Do is the active word, the verb that you can see them doing. You can see them note taking. You can see them projecting their voice. Those are things that are important. Um, but by the end of the lesson, don't have more than three or four maximum. Um, the lesson content is a summary of the important things that they must demonstrate to achieve the lesson outcomes. They must be able to design a PowerPoint slide on which they will put bullets of the, the main points for their introduction, plus a visual image to support the, the theme of the, the speech. Okay. These must be observable. Um, for instance, this lesson content, they must be able to list instructions, take notes, identify characters if it's a short story, um, and therefore it must include a verb. They list, take, summarize of verbs, um, which tells you what they will be able to do. Okay, so those are very important, how you'll be assessed, and you know which ones you can't use. You can't use understand, know, and be aware. And here's another example of how you write a learning outcome. You've got a STEM by the end of the lesson. The learners should be able to describe something, list something, summarize something, draw something, whatever they might have to do. There's the learning, the relationship between listening and hearing. All right. Um, where? In an oral presentation or in a listening exercise. So you can use these sections to sort of de de uh, design your learning outcomes. Again, I'm not saying this again, poor learning outcomes, don't use those words, okay? I don't ever want to see that in your, your, your lesson plan. Understand, know, and aware. This shows you to know something, to understand something, those are bad, but this one is good to formulate. You can write that, you can justify. Here's another one of examples of poor learning outcomes. Participants will understand you can't, because you can't see what they're understanding. They will develop. You can't see what they will develop in the future. How can they be present and demonstra demonstrable? Check the wording of your outcomes. So with Colleen, the introduction will be the pre. It's a summary of how you will gain the attention of your, your learners, how you're going to arouse their motivation, how you're going to explain the purpose of the lesson, how you're going to review any prior knowledge, this is about five minutes of your lesson, but how are you going to get the attention of your learners? Are you just going to ask them a question? They're so boring. You might have a lot of visuals up um, in terms of multilingualism, or you might have people coming to demonstrate different languages they speak in their class. So you might have as a speaker, you might have an English speaker, Afrikaans speaker, Greeks, someone speaks Greek, um, someone speaks maybe Italian. Okay. And this might get their attention and you understand what diversity is and multilingualism is in the classroom. Or you can have pictures of people from different countries and you can speak about language and so on. But how will you get their, their attention so that by the end they will know what you're speaking about when you're speaking about multilingualism or if you're speaking about um, your, your speech making, public speaking, um, do they know what it's all about, all right? How are you going to get that attention? So Colleen also speaks about the pre, the during, and the post. So those are the main parts of the body introduction, your prior knowledge, then your development, the during lesson, and then the closure, which is your consolidation, where you assess what were my learning outcomes met. I wanted them to summarize a paragraph from, um, from the book whatever it might have been, and were they able to do that? And these are things that you're going to maybe do, including your, your lesson plan. Um, you've got a teaching strategy, and I've told you it must be inductive and it must be text-based. What is your text? What is it? How do you make a discovery that they, the learners are going to do everything, not the teacher? How are they going to discover meaning by, by your, your teaching approach? How are you going to facilitate learning? How are you going to assist with scaffolding? How are you going to keep your learners on the task if they're in group work? How are you going to make sure they finish the task? What questions are you going to have? How are you going to manage this learning environment? Right? Asking questions, moving them around. How are you going to get feedback? How are you going to know what's going on? Are you going to get them to report back? Are you going to get them to present? Are you going to ask them to have role plays? How are you going to get feedback from them? And how are you going to 
how, how are they going to monitor their own language learning? Are you going to get them to assess what everyone was listening to? Or are you going to get them to mark how their friend presented their introduction? How are you going to monitor that? Okay, this is also before, during, and after class type of plan. What you're going to do before class, you're going to have to have your objectives. You're going to have to know what your assessments are going to be. You're going to have to have read or listened to the, um, the TED Talk because you can't actually go and teach it if you haven't listened to it. Um, what's your timeline? How are you going to close the lesson? That all happens before. But during the class, you're going to share your lesson plan with the students, which helps them keep engaged. In this class, I'm going to do this, this, and this, so they know how their lesson is going to, to continue. And after the class, you're going to reflect on what went well and what did you do differently. It's so important. Um, after every every I'm recording I do with you, I, I think of what was good, what was bad, what was terrible, what I need to improve on. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do. I'm not sure. So with, le with the lesson closure as a summary of how the lesson will be brought to a logical conclusion at an appropriate time, that you don't just, the bell goes and you say the lesson's over, how are you going to make sure that you've consolidated the lesson and you've achieved the lesson outcome that was there and needed? Um, how are you going to do assessment of learning? How are you going to get feedback on what students have learned? And this is through your assessment, the formal speech for the FETs and for the point form summary for the SPs. Okay, how are you going to do it? Um, what about your lesson evaluation? What have we have done differently? You're not required to do this, but you should be reflecting on it all the time. What would you do differently? So this is just an example. What went well? Oh no, that didn't work. Be aware of all of those when you're teaching. Here's some useful websites. Um, using newspapers as teaching resources. Um, www.education.world.com um, www.kidscoop.com you can use newspapers there are some nice websites to look at there are some think rethink write websites that you can look for lesson planning when you get onto writing and yes quite a nice one for um, a variety of lesson plans from www.primaryschool.co.au those are also things you can go and look at which will help you um, look at all those Australia they are really really great Okay, so we're coming to the end of Unit 2, and we've looked at um, the whole section from CLT teaching to orals to listening, um, which is now going to happen in SS2. We've looked at resources also for listening and resources for orals. And today we're specifically also going to look at the rubrics, assessing learning. So this, this is divided into Part 1 and Part 2. Um, I'm going to conclude the part one now, and I'm going to come back with the part two, which is going to be looking at assessing for learning. Okay, especially looking at rubric design, because you're going to actually need this when you go and present um, your SS2. You're going to have to have a rubric for your point form summary for SPs, and you're going to have to need a rubric or marking guide for your formal oral speech, and we'll be discussing this in my next my next presentation, which I'm going to start now. Okay, bye for now. Oh, there's the report card. Let's stop my share. End the lesson.